AQA, A level physics, and I've got some waves multi choice questions here. So, what you should do is uh, on each question, I'm going to show you it for about three seconds. Pause the video, do it, pen, paper, calculator, do it, work it out. Then I will show you the answer and maybe talk a little bit about the answer and how I got it. Okay. But the best revision you can do is practice. So do these questions before you look at my answers, do these questions. So here we go. Three seconds for each one. There's 11 of them, I think. Okay, so number one, when comparing x-rays with ultraviolet, which is correct, uh, x-rays have a lower frequency, rubbish, we've got a higher frequency. X-rays travel fast, no, all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum. Uh, x-rays do not show diffraction in, in, well, that's rubbish as well, yes, they do. Uh, using the same element, uh, photoelectrons emitted using x-rays have greater maximum kinetic energy is true because x-rays have a higher frequency so their photons have more energy so if they cause emission of electrons those electrons will have more kinetic energy so the answer is d uh, monochromatic radiation from a source is shone onto a met metallic surface electrons are emitted uh, when a second source is used no electrons are emitted which property of the radiation from source a must be greater well, if it's causing emission, then its photons have got more energy, so they have a higher frequency. So the answer is B. Uh, the diagram shows two pulses. Uh, this is before and after. So what does after look like? And it looks like C. So basically what's going to happen is that the two waves will interfere with each other, but then they will carry on as if nothing happened. So this, this pulse here will end up there this pulse here will end up there and the two waves will carry on as if nothing happened okay so the answer is c uh, monochromatic light may be characterized by its speed frequency and wavelength uh, which of the following quantities change when monochromatic light passes from air into glass so look at this diagram imagine we have a piece of glass and we have some uh, these are some wave fronts coming in and they go into the glass and this is what happens. OK, so what happens is when they go in the glass, you should know that they slow down uh, and that the wavelength gets smaller. So uh, which of the contents? So the answer is B. I mean, the frequency won't change. You've got the same number of wave fronts per second. It's just that they slow down and because of that, they get closer together. So the answer is B. Uh, the graph shows the vertical height of a wave traveling distance along the path of the wave speed. Of what is the period of the wave? So uh, now the period is one over the frequency. So if I write F uh, equals V over lambda, which you should know from the wave equation, then the period is one over the frequency so the period will be lambda over v equals uh, now from the graph the wavelength is uh, four centimeters and we're told that the the period of the wave uh, no sorry the um, velocity of the wave is 20 so the period will be one over five which is 0 0.2 OK, uh, a good example of a question where they give you information you don't need, which is the amplitude. 
Okay, but anyway, the answer is B. Uh, which statement is not correct for ultrasound and x-rays? And the answer that's rubbish is C. Why? Because ultrasound is longitudinal and longitudinal waves can't be polarized. Uh, monochromatic light of wavelength 490 dada, which of the following is correct? So what you can do is just basically uh, n lambda is d sine theta. So be able to use this equation, n lambda equals d sine theta. And for, for working out the angle, so it's theta is sine to the minus 1, sine to the minus 1 of uh, n lambda over d, isn't it? And if you work out theta for the first order, you get 17 degrees. Yay, the answer's A. I mean, if you work out the second order, uh, I believe you get something like 36 degrees, so that's rubbish. Uh, the third and higher orders are not produced. Now, what you would do there is to work out how many orders you get. What If we say that um, N, now if we say that the, the maximum value of theta is 90 degrees you should know this if the maximum value of theta is 90 degrees then sine theta is 1 okay so to work out n max n is d over lambda and it will be whatever answer you get it's the whole number which is less than that uh, and if you work out that value of n, you get something like, I think it's something like 3.4, okay? In other words, you do get a third order, okay? You don't get a fourth order, you get a third order. So um, C is rubbish. Uh, a grating with more lines per meter could produce more orders. Uh, no, it won't, actually. Um, if it's more lines per meter, then the, the, the there would be more spread out. You'd get less orders. Uh, which of the following provides uh, direct experimental evidence that uh, light is a transverse wave motion? This is off another page, another paper. You know, it's the same, you know, we've already done this. Light can be polarized. That tells us it's transverse. Uh, this was a tricky little thing here. Stationary waves are set up on a straight of blood. So you've got two strings, vibrating strings. They've got the same. Uh, first harmonic frequency, the same natural frequency, yeah, the same fundamental, uh, and which of the combinations therefore is possible, the tension is the same. Now, uh, I chewed on this for a while. The way that I did it, well, we have this equation, uh, which is F equals 1 over 2L, 1 over 2L root T over mu. Now, you should remember that mu is the mass per unit length, okay? Now, the, we're saying that the frequency is the same. So 1 over 2L root T over mu is the same. I'm going to get rid of the square root, and I'm going to say, therefore, 1 over 4L squared. Funny looking L. Uh, equals uh, times t over mu is the same as well, okay? Now, mu is the mass per unit length. If uh, you doubled the diameter, then the mass per unit length would be four times bigger because the cross-sectional area is four times bigger. So basically, the mass per unit length is proportional to the diameter squared, isn't it? Yes, as I say, again, if you double the diameter, then the mass per unit length would be four times bigger. Therefore, for F to be the same, it, the answer is C. So if, if L was a half, then uh, and D was twice as much, then it would have the same effect on those and F squared would be the same. I feel I could explain that better, but it's a pig of an answer. Um, and a complicated question, the answer is C. Hardest question on the paper, probably. 
Uh, when monochromatic uh, light source incident on two slits of the same width interference pattern, one slit is covered with black paper. So a single slit diffraction pattern is like that. That's a single slit diffraction pattern. Now, if you have two slits, now two slits diffraction pattern is something like something like that okay that's one slit that's two slits notice that the, the two slit pattern is like within the one slit envelope if you like there's the there's the one slit envelope okay uh, anyway if you covered one of the slits you'd basically go from there to there now the intensity of the central maxima will increase if you cover one of the slits. No, it won't because you've got two slits. You've got twice as much light contributing to that. So that is rubbish. That's wrong. The width of the central maximum decreases. No, look at it. It gets much bigger. So that's wrong. Uh, fewer maxima are observed if you cover one of the slits. Well, yes, you go from lots of maxima just to, you know, these ones here. Uh, the outer maxima become wider. Um, not sure about that. The answer is C. Uh, when light of wavelength doodar is incident normally on the diffraction grating, the fourth order maxima is observed at an angle of 30 degrees. What is the number of lines per millimeter? So again, this is uh, n lambda is d sine theta. Yeah, it's almost every paper this comes up. Um, we are working out, well, if we work out D, which is the slit separation, and so D is going to be N lambda over sine theta. And if you bung in your numbers, uh, on my calculator, I didn't have to use my brain at all. I got 1 over 250,000. OK, uh, and that basically tells me that there's 250,000 lines per meter. So there's 250 lines per millimeter and 250 is A. Uh, OK, I hope you found that useful. Uh, catch you later.